Hello, Math Study students. Welcome to another online lesson. Today we'll be continuing our discussion from last class, specifically dealing with mean, median, and mode. But we'll be focusing on using technology, specifically our TI-83 and 84 calculators, in order to find those versions of average. And then we'll be talking about finding the mean of grouped continuous data, uh, very similar to the data that we would put on a histogram. To start with, I have a little recap from last class when we were talking about finding median we I was often referring to the middle term for example if I have an odd number of scores like 1 uh, 4 7 9 and 11 meaning that I have five numbers there an odd number of them there's always one in the middle and we can see that, you know, by just, you know, crossing off and working our way down to the middle, and we've got our middle one being seven, and that would be the median if they're in order. But what happens when we have like 111 of them, or 99 of them, or 45, or some other odd number, where it's, I don't necessarily want to cross off 20-some numbers on either side or, or more. Um, so an easy way to find out where the middle is, is divide the number of scores by two, and then round up. So, for example, on this very simple one here, we had five numbers. One, two, three, four, and five. If I take five numbers, I divide by two. An odd divided by two will always give you a decimal, and so we end up with 2.5. But if I were to round that up to the nearest whole number, I'd have three. And I can look here and say, okay, I've got the first number, the second number. Oh, there's the third number, and that would have been my median. That would work for much higher, like if I had 51 numbers. 51 divided by two is going to give me 25.5, which I'm going to round up to 26. So if I counted up all my numbers in order, if I had 51 of them, the 26th number would be the median. Now when we have an even group of numbers, same idea, divide the number. So let's just look at a simple example with four numbers. Again, four being even, so we have four total numbers. And where is our median? Well, it's in between the second and the third one. We'd have to average those together. So I would need to look at the second number as well as the third number in the list in order to find that. So let's follow the directions I have here on the second bullet point. It says an even number of scores divide the number of scores, the total, by two. Well, we had four scores. If I divide it by two, I end up with two. Use that term, so that number, the second number, which would be a 3 in this case, and the one after it, so the 4. And then you would just add those together and divide by 2. So let's say I had 50 numbers. Well, divide by 2, get 25. So I would look for the 25th number and the 26th number, the one after it. I would add those together and divide by 2, and that would be my median. If I had 100 numbers, I would look for 100 divided by 2 is 50. So I'd look for the 50th number, again, count them all up, the 50th one and the 51st one, and I could, again, add and divide by 2. And that's how we can quickly find the median of any set of numbers that are already in order. Example 1, find mean, median, and mode of the following data using technology. So we did a very similar problem to this. might have even been the same set of data last time. Um, when we talk about mean, we need to add up all of our frequencies and then multiply the score times the frequency or our data times the frequency. And it took us quite a bit of uh, energy to do that. And we still had to use a calculator in the end. What I'm going to show you is a, well... I don't know if easier is the right word, but, uh, but yeah, maybe easier way to do this using our graphing calculator. So let me move my data just a little bit here. And if you want to get out your calculators now, the best way to do this is literally to follow along. So we'll try to find my best positioning here. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it. So I can see my data and I can see my calculator here. Well, my score is my data, and I want to make a list that sort of looks like what we've got here. So we're going to hit Stat button. The Stat button is sort of in the center of your calculator. Uh, let me circle it here. So there's your Stat button. You go ahead and you hit, and you hit that button, and it will take you to the Stat menu here. We are going to select Edit, which is the first one. So I'm going to press the 1. And 
I now have all these L1s, L2, L3, which stand for lists. I am going to put this list of data into my calculator. Uh, 3, enter, 4, enter, 5, so on and so forth. And 3 and in all this data up until 11. All right, so I've got my list of data here. And, um, and now I'm going to let my second list be my frequency list. 5, 6, 10, 4, so on and so forth. An important thing to check for when you're all said and done is to make sure that you have the same amount of numbers in each list. And you can see that as I cursor back and forth here, uh, you know, I'll even count which term I'm at. List two, it says L2 with a 10 in parentheses, so the 10th term, so on and so forth. So there's 10 numbers in each one, and it's the same in both of these. They match up. All right, now we are going to press stat again. The first time we edited it to get our data in there, now we're going to press, so we really don't even need to see my original data anymore, so I'll bring up the big screen here on the calculator. And uh, if you want to even know what buttons I've been pressing, you can see those. I'll clear it now to start fresh. And now we want to actually do some calculations. So I'm going to arrow once to the right, and that gets me to my calculations. Now we ask ourselves, do I have one variable here or two variables? Frequency is not a variable. It just counts your variables. So we have one variable statistics. Later on, we'll get into two variable statistics. But for now, we are doing one variable statistics. And we press Enter. If you just press enter again, and I could do that now, it, uh, it gives me a bunch of crazy looking numbers here. They're all wrong, but it's giving me these crazy looking numbers. Because what the calculator has done, because it's one variable stats and I didn't tell it anything else, it says one variable. Oh, I must just want to look at my one list. And if I go back to this one list, it's only looking here at L1. But I don't want just L1. I want it to look at L1 and L2. So I need to tell the calculator that. It's sort of like when we make, make groups with parentheses in the calculator. We need to tell it where to look. So I'm going to go back to stat. I'm going to go back to calculate. I'm going to go back to one variable stats, but I'm not going to press enter. Actually, let me clear that out so we have a nice clear screen. Do the same thing again. Stat, calculate, one variable stats. OK, I need to tell it where to look. And so the, the combination that we do is we first tell it where our data is. And our data was at L1. Well, if you look at the calculator, there's a button L1. You can get to it. It's actually the same key as the number one, but right above it, you'll see a little blue L1. And you can see that right there. And so to get to that blue one, we have to press the second key. So I press second, and then I press the one key, and lo and behold, an L1 popped up on my calculator. Now I need a comma. The comma is located right above the seven, saying we have another list as well. And the calculator is smart enough to know that if you give it a second list using one variable stats, that means there can only be one set of variables and so, or one set of data. So the next list we're giving must be our frequency list. So I want L2, so we press second again, and then the two button. So it's one variable stats using L1 comma L2. L1 being your data is always first and your frequency is always second. And then we press enter. You'll notice the numbers that I got are different than the last time around. Now let's go through these. X with a line over it. That is mean. Then we have this uh, crazy looking EX, which is sigma. That means that it's added up all of our data. So if we added up every bit of data, we'd have 798. And then we could divide by the total number of data, and we could find our mean. But we already got our mean, so we don't even need that. This is the sum of all of our data squared, which we'll never use, so don't worry about that. Then there's two types of standard deviation, which we'll talk about on a different day. And then we have n. n is the number of pieces of data. So there are 93 pieces of data. If we added up our frequency, we should get 93, if I typed everything in correctly. Um, but wait, there is more. So we are going to scroll down now. So on your calculator, press the down arrow. And you can see that there was this little arrow next to the N implying that we could go down. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, keep going, and I see more stuff. 
see this min x, q sub one, mead, q sub three, max. We're gonna talk about our min or max. Those are obviously our lowest and highest pieces of data. It was three and 12, and that's correct. Um, and then our quartiles, which we'll talk about later in class, but we wanna focus on the median. And the median that we want is nine. So what do we have? We have two answers. We have our median being nine, and we have, if I scroll back up, that first piece of data was our um, our mean, which was 8.58. So mean 8.58, median was nine. And I believe that's all they asked for here. Mean, oh, and it asked for mode as well. Well, mode technology doesn't help us out. So for mode, you still have to look at it, but mode was always the easy one. Mode is the one with the highest frequency. And lo and behold, this one has the highest frequency. So our mode would be 10. It was right down the data, not the, uh, the frequency. So that's how we can use technology to help find mean, median, and to a lesser effect mode. All right, I had one more thing I wanted to show you guys from the learning intentions, which was dealing with um, continuous data, continuous grouped data. Think about our histograms. We'd often have data put together in a range, like from 10 to 20, 20 to 30. We'd know a certain number of data was in there, but we never knew exactly how much each piece of data was. So in order to represent each class, we use what's called the midpoint of the class or the mid interval value. Sometimes it's called mid interval. Um, the midpoint of the class interval is the average of the endpoints. So if we think back to, we had a problem dealing with age the other day and we went from 20 all the way up to uh, 30. And then we went from 30 all the way up to 40 and so on and so forth. And so for our first group of data, the mid would be the average of this lowest to the starting point to the ending point of that interval. And the average of 20 and 30, if you add them together and divide by two, you get 25. The midpoint from 30 to 40 would be 35. Midpoint from 40 to 50 would be 45, so on and so forth. And then we simply use that data. And if we're trying to use um, our technology or our calculator, that would be the data that we actually put into our list. And I go on to say that any data calculated using this midpoint is an approximation, meaning an estimate. We don't actually know the value, but it's a good way to estimate it. It's the best way, in fact. And then the mode of the continuous group data, again, we've, we've seen this in class here, it's the modal class, the modal group. Mode meaning the most often and modal being the adjective form of that. Again, look for the highest frequency, but always write down the data or the class. So let's try that out. So we're given some score ranges or classes from zero to 10, 10 to 20, so on and so forth. And these represent exam scores for three of Mr. Peacock's math studies, two classes. Find the mean and modal classes. Mean and modal classes. So um, for the mean, the first thing that we're going to need to know is our midpoint. Our midpoint or our mid value. Again, we find by looking at the scores from 0 to 10. Well, what's halfway between 0 and 10? We'll add 0 and 10 together and divide by 2, and we get 5. What is the mid-interval value from 10 to 20? Well, that is going to be 15, and so on and so forth. And we have 25, and we can keep doing that um, for all of our different values. And we need to do that for all of our different values. But I've already done this ahead of time, so I'm going to pull up uh, another screen that already has this information. All right, so now we can see all of those values up here. And if I were to do this by hand now, we'd do it sort of like what we did last class, where I would actually take um, each one of these values and multiply them together. So I would have 2 times 5, you know, and so I would have 10 there, 3 times 15, which would be 45, so on and so forth, just multiplying all these together and then eventually add up all of these values here and divide by the total of the frequency. Did I lose you yet? Well, that's again what we basically did last class, except instead of using our actual data, 
we are using our mid interval values and then counting how many there were, multiplying those together and getting these values here. But since we just learned our calculator method, why don't we go ahead and do that? So let me pull up my calculator again. And on my calculator, I'm gonna enter in two lists again. The first list always has to be your data, but we're not gonna put in our data groups. We're not gonna put in these scores with the classes and these ranges. Instead, we are going to put in our mid interval, oops, our mid interval values. So on your calculator, go back to stat, go back to edit, which is our first choice there. And I've got all this data already in here. Now you can just type over the data and that's fine. But if you want to get rid of the data, highlight the list itself. So now you can see that my L1 is highlighted just by using the cursor. And do not press delete. If you press delete, it won't get rid of the data. It'll just hide the whole list and you'd have to go through a bunch of menus to get it back. I can show you how to do that if you accidentally do it. But we want to press clear right below the down arrow. And it looks like nothing happened. But if you now press enter, voila, the list is empty. And then I can arrow over to list two. Once again, press clear, either down arrow or enter. And again, it's all empty. So list one always has to be my data, or I think that's a good thing to use, but our data is gonna be our mid interval, interval values. So five, 15, 25, 35, so on and so forth. go all the way up to 95. All right, now that I've got my data in, I need to put my frequencies. So I'm gonna use my frequency list, starting with two, three, zero, so on and so forth. And once again, when we finish this up, we wanna make sure we have the same numbers in each list. We'll actually get an error on our calculator if you don't have the same. So we will avoid that. And we can see once again, my cursor back and forth, I'm on a blank space for each of them. The five and the 95 went together for the frequency and mid interval value. Now we'll follow the exact same steps. So I go to stat, calculate, still have one variable statistics. So I press enter. I need to tell it where my data was, which was list one. So second one, comma, second two for my frequency list, press enter. And I can see that my mean is 62.3, which makes sense. 62.3 is somewhere within my data range. So that's reasonable. It's sort of towards the middle. Um, and then if I were to scroll down, now I could technically find the median value, though I'm not sure we even had a value of 65, so they won't often ask for that. The other part that we wanted to do, actually, we don't even need the calculator for, that was the modal class. And again, we're just looking for the class that has the most stuff in it. So we go to frequency, and that would be 17. Now it says modal class. So 65 here is not a class. That's a mid-interval value or a midpoint value. So the class that we'd want to write down is from 60 up to 70. And that would be our modal class. All right, so make sure that you have your calculators next class. We'll be using technology to find mean, median, and mode. And we've got some homework problems on 178 and 182.